Hi everyone, uh, in a moment I'm about to show you my redesigned coolant skimmer and how it works uh, but, but first I thought I'd just explain what a coolant skimmer is doing and the problem I was trying to solve so this is the existing design from a company called Abenaki there are different makes and this isn't a particularly good one but even the good ones aren't really working that well um, and a coolant skimmer is basically it uses a kind of waterfall slash vortex effect to get coolant and oil and debris which floats to the surface of the coolant um, out of the tank. You don't want it in your coolant, you want to get rid of it. But if you have a pump just filtering, the sucking the coolant up and putting it through a filter, um, unless it's drawing from the surface, it's not going to work. Um, so instead what you have is the pump attached to something like this. So here's a pump. It's just a normal fish tank pump and it basically attaches like that uh, it goes there's a little impeller inside the pump here and then it takes it up there to the filter um, well there's a filter and a coalescer so it kind of in the same way a, a pond pump might work it filters it up into this kind of tank where it settles out and then the oil rises to the top and then it's isolated in that tank and not going around your coolant tank so that's the principle of it and why this one doesn't work is because the idea is the coolant goes in here, goes in here, goes in here. And um, with those three inlets, you would yeah, the principle is you'd get a vortex. Uh, and that vortex, I talked about the waterfall effect, kind of has the coolant just going into the vortex and then over the edge and then getting sucked down. So even though it sits on the surface, it's still sucked in. The reason it doesn't work is because a triangle isn't, I found, isn't very conducive to a good vortex. A vortex is a kind of spiral, so having a triangular shape doesn't really get a good spiral. Uh, even when it's all cleaned out, there's no oil in it, which oil is quite heavy, a liquid, so it's harder to get around. So you need quite a strong vortex to draw it down. So even when you've just put it in the tank, you don't get a strong vortex and it's struggling to get liquid off the surface. Um, the other thing is that or that seems to be causing a problem is that the outlet to the pump is on the side. I would think that when you've got a vortex, you want it going straight down the middle and the outlet coming out the bottom. So the vortex is going straight down. Uh, instead, this outlet to the side kind of means the vortex is kind of going down and sideways. And again, it just, it doesn't work. You don't get a strong vortex. Uh, these floats are pretty rubbish. They're better on other models. Most other models are like this, triangular with an outlet at the side. Um, uh, but yeah, the floats are rubbish. They kind of they're hard to adjust. Um, when you get the suction comes on and the level changes, these kind of tend to tip over because the pipe, this kind of corrugated pipe and the suction on the pump do put a force on this. So it, it's hard to get it sitting level. It's always kind of being pushed and pulled in a different direction. Uh, so that's another problem. Yeah, these floats you kind of adjust them to make it sit level. But as I've said, they. You know, you're having to put your hand in the coolant and you're trying to screw this and adjust this nut and pull them up and down. It's just, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, especially when they get a bit gunky. Um, so that is that, the existing design. Um, what I've done is try and solve all those problems. So first thing that's most noticeable is I've got this thing standing to the side. And what that's doing is, if you look on the coolant skimmer itself it's got these kind of little ovals and those slide on to this if I let get them all lined up what that means is it just goes up and down and there's another one of these that goes on the top of the rods and that means they're all kind of held rock solid and that means it can only go up and down it can't do what the other one was doing where it kind of tips from side to side like that um, instead, even though you've got the force of the, the pump pulling on here, it will only go up and down. So it's always at a level and therefore you've got always got um, coolant going in each inlet uh, an equal amount and therefore you get a good consistent vortex, even as the, the level changes in the tank. And obviously with it sliding up and down, it can kind of adjust the level. Um, I'll just explain a bit about the parts involved. So I'll probably actually um, show you this in CAD so you can see each individual part. Uh, but what you've got is one, they're all 3D printed out of PLA plastic and then glued together. So you've got one, two, three, uh, 
four is this piece in the middle then five six seven of these floats on the edge and then you've got the kind of things for the rods so what's that eight and nine um, unless of cost count, lost count then, but whatever around, just under 10 pieces or 10 pieces. Um, and it works in a very similar way to the triangular version. So you've got three in which you can just see behind this float here, around the edge. It's a bit hard to see in grey plastic. Um, you've got this bottom piece with a little spout to the side, and then this this is the actual spout that kind of glues on there. Um, you got this insert, and then yeah, you've got the floats. So what this insert is doing is based. So coolant comes in, same as with the triangular piece, but it's circular this time, so you get a nice strong vortex. But what it's doing, what this piece does, is flips over and goes in like that, and that. I might get my hand sword. That lines up with the spout here, and what that means is the vortex kind of goes straight down through the middle and then does a right angle turn out of here so it means you get a really good vertex going, vortex going straight out down the middle and then the suction comes on rather than the vortex kind of just being pulled to the side and killing the vortex like it does in the other version um, so that's what that inlet does um, I did play around with the sizing and so on and eventually kind of arrived at this being the right size where you get a good vortex good suction uh, the bigger you make this kind of the more volume is in there so the vortex gets weaker but at the same time if you make it too small um the pump almost kind of is just trying too hard it's not getting enough volume in so this is after playing around with a few styles this is kind of the right size um i did play around with a version like this which has a spout at the bottom and has the spout coming out of the bottom uh, but what i found was that actually it didn't go low enough in the tank, so when the level dropped, it kind of stopped there. So uh, the the coolant level would stop, and then it starts cavitating, um, which means it's kind of just sucking on air. And once a pump starts cavitating, it um, it will not stop cavitating until you turn it off and let the air come through, and then keep turning it on and off. And eventually, that air does work its way out, and then it will work again. But it's a yeah, it's not going to sort itself out basically. Um, I did try. Because you do get, with a strong vortex, what you, what you get is the air going down, getting taken down with it. And um, so I did try fixing that, kind of using a spike. So you can see I just kind of put that in there, like that. Um, but that didn't work. Basically, you just have to accept that the, the vortex takes air down with it. And the way to solve that is... Um, trying to make this as long as possible. Uh, so that's what I've done. I've tried to make it as deep as I can without making it too deep and when you sit it in the coolant tank you'll see you kind of want the level as high up as you can to get a nice volume in there and let the vortex kind of spiral down and a bit of air goes through with the pump but that's no from what I've read online that's no bad thing it's not going to damage the pump long term unless you're taking a, a lot of air down which I'm not um so yeah that's kind of how the the vortex works and how it kind of stays level in the tank then you've got these floats just screwed on the side uh, which keep it at the level you want with you can see these holes in the top of the uh, top of the um the floats they're not obviously um to keep them buoyant uh i 3d printed it so these aren't holes actually into a cavity they're holes which have a wall on them so obviously there's there's air trapped inside there still uh, so you just put a screw in there and add as many washers or take as many washers off as you want to kind of keep the level where you um, where you want it. So I actually have it with three washers on this front one where there's the spiral is and two on these. And that seems to sit it at the right level in my particular tank. Um, yeah, and I think that's the overview other than, you know, I've, I've used, this is PLA plastic. I've used Gorilla Glue to uh, to fix it all together. I've had it in the tank for about two weeks and I don't notice a reaction between the Gorilla Glue and the um, and either the coolant or the plastic. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that, but it seems to be working well so far. Uh, you can see the Gorilla Glue's kind of bubbled up a bit, but I think it, it, well, I know it did that when I, that's just how it kind of dries. There's nothing to do with the coolant. So it does look a bit rough, but it's, I don't know, there's, it hasn't got worse since it's gone in the coolant tank. Um, so that is that. Um, and then what you do is you pop it in, the well, put it on the, the metal rods on those, uh, and then attach it to the pump so the pump just like with the triangular pump the pump just goes on there like that 
uh, in there and then up to the uh, up to the coolant coalescer and filter uh, and that just gets rid of the oil so that is the the principle of the new design and I'll show you in a moment how it works in the actual coolant tank so here it is actually working around the ha uh, back of my Haas UMC and as you can see I've got a good spiral going down uh, maybe you kind of just bob it kind of sits at the right level I could have it sitting a little bit low which mean I would just have to add um, add a few more of these washers on top of the screws um, but yeah the pump is sitting in there so that's what the the pipe and the wire at the back go to uh, the pump is underneath the water so it just comes up out that pipe into the coolant coalescer and then if I come around here give you a different angle you can see it comes up into here there's some um, you can just see a green kind of mesh in there that causes it to settle and then you can see the oil and stuff just starting to settle on the surface um, and this line here is when I turn it off and um, that's the kind of level it drops to um, and that's why there's kind of gunk at that level but yeah it means basically on this side of the coalescer it settles and then there's a, a tap there's two sides to the coalescer you can see the kind of um, line down the middle and it comes through a little port here into this side and then this side is much cleaner and then it rises kind of level rises and then the outlet is on this side where I just try and get a good angle on this so comes out there's a, an outlet that actually goes right to the top and it kind of waterfalls just over top so again only the stuff that rises to the very top will come over down into this pipe and then fall down into back into the, the coolant tank and I've just done that 3d printed um, thing that kind of slots into holes so just make sure if I knock it it doesn't it doesn't come out of the hole and start spraying coolant everywhere so yeah that is it working and as you can see it just it works quite happily I mentioned I don't have a top on the this bit of the coolant tank so I can have these rods as long as I want uh, but you could cut those down and they would they would fit under the coolant tank uh, but I I've put it in that section of the coolant tank as well to because um, that's where the pumps actually draw the coolant from so I want that bit to be as clean as possible um, ideally you probably have one in each section of the tank because on the house tank what happens is it comes back through here um, the pump, uh, sorry, the um, the chip conveyor on the UMC 500 that I've got here is absolutely useless. Most of the chips just wash straight out of the bottom into this um, chip basket, um, and then I've put this kind of filter paper underneath to catch any fines. So if I lift that up, I've just cleaned the tank, so you can see it catching the fines there that go through this mesh. Um, the mesh is quite good for catching the bigger chips. Um, goes through that but you still get some stuff goes into the coolant tank um, and settles in there but really you're drawing from in that section of the tank here um, and what happens is there's kind of a hidden pipe under here uh, that goes along and then there's a little kind of hole between the two tanks or that connects the two halves of the tanks um, just down here and that goes into this 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 is the through spindle pump and then that is the main pump um, yeah so it's doing a pretty good job and it's uh, as you can see the vortex is I don't want to drop my phone here <laughs> the vortex is, is pretty darn good so anything on the surface just gets sucked straight in um, so yeah that is the updated coolant skimmer so this is the design file for the coolant skimmer intake. It's not the neatest design file because I've been playing around with various iterations of the design, but it's available if you want to. Uh, just drop me an email or something and I'll, I'll forward it on to you. And you've at least got the something to work with if you want to need another design file yourself and so on, or just edit the design. Sorry, that's my um, compressor running in the background, if you can hear that. So. I'll run through each part. It's all designed to be 3D printed. I have a Creality CR10 3D printer, which is about five years old now. It prints fine on that, so if it prints okay with me, it should, this all should print okay on um, whatever 3D printer you have. 
So if I just go for each individual part one at a time, this is the main body of the coolant intake. So it's designed to be printed this way out. I've done these little bridges here just to give it an extra bit of strength. It has three notches in the bottom which are designed to line up with the other half of the main body. So you can see the little notches there lines up with there. I just put a layer of glue around this inner edge here and then put the two halves together and it's stayed together. Well, it's very strong. Uh, the next bit that I turn these on is, so no, I'll just rewind a second. This part, this main body is printed this way up. As you can see, it's got a solid base here, so it just prints that way up and it's fine. However, you will need to put a little bit of support in here. And I just then pull that support out with pliers and it's fine. You don't get an issue. So I hide both of those, turn these bodies back on. The next part is, if I just hide that one, is this one. So you print that that way up with the flat base against the, the print bed, obviously. And it has these little, this is to guide, once the uh, coolant comes down through the center, it guides it out through the spout on the side. Uh, these two little, I don't know what you call them, extrusions here, line up with these two little notches in the base here. So you'll have no problem lining it up. And once it's in place, it'll stay in place. You don't need to glue it down. It sits on this little ridge here. As you can see, it just sits there quite happily. You don't need to glue it in place. The spout that goes on the... Yeah, uh, outlet from this part is just printed standing up like that. As you can see, it's got a loft between the circular section and the square section, but it doesn't need any kind of support in there. And it doesn't actually need support under these little overhangs here. They're not big enough for the it to cause it an issue. So you don't need any support there either. Uh, what you do to attach this is just put a, a thin layer of glue all around the inside and put it on. Don't use too much or else it'll start blocking the actual the outlet here. Uh, but again, once that's in, in place, it glues together fine. Then you've got these floats. So you have three of these. I don't have three modeled up, uh, but you can see how it works. You've got one there, one there, one there. They're attached to the main body. I drop it, is that an M5? Yeah, so an M5 screw goes through there. Just put a nut underneath, tie in it, and it'll stay in place. You don't actually need to use both both holes with two screws. I've done a section analysis just to show that this float is hollow, and I print it as being entirely hollow. The idea of it having this point on the end here is that when you flip it this way up and print it, you don't need any kind of support in the middle. Obviously, if it had a flat top, then you'd need support in the middle, and you're trying to get as much volume, so as much air in the, trapped in there as possible to give you as much buoyancy as you can get. So you'll notice there's this little hole here. That's so you can put a screw, just stand it up in there. And what is that? So that's it. that'll be an M5 screw, just stands in there. And you can drop washers onto the screw and they'll stay in place because the screw holds them there to add or remove weight. And that means obviously add more washers, then it weighs the, the flow down. And that means this sinks in the coolant tank. So it's just to help you adjust it to get uh, it sitting at the right level in the coolant tank. That's all that is. But as you can see, it's got solid wall all the way around. So I've had mine in the tank for a couple of weeks now and I've not had any or noticed any water ingress into these floats. But if you do that, get that, all you need to do is just thicken these walls up here. I made them as thin as I could really get away with so they printed faster. But yeah, if you're getting that problem, just thicken these walls up. Uh, right, next we have, well finally we have, I'll hide that section last again, these parts here. So, these are, uh, this is the base and it's a, another version, so you just print two of these and put one on the top, one on the bottom, and this is where the rods go in. Uh, so they run up through these little, I don't know what you call them, little loops on the side of the, the skimmer intake. And they just mean it goes up and down without floating around the tank uh, or twisting. 
So you print two of those, uh, they're designed to use a 6mm rod and give a re every 3D printer is different but on mine that gives a relatively tight fit so you can still remove the rods once they're in, they're not jammed in but um, they give a tight enough fit that it doesn't wobble everywhere. I, with hindsight, I probably would have made this base round so if you do want to edit this, uh, I'd make this base round or put some maybe legs on it just to give it a bit more of a solid base because this is actually quite small and narrow so if you knock it then it may fall over in the tank it's not a problem for me but it's something that you may want to consider if you're going to do an edit uh, and that's a design file i will as i said if you want this just email me i'll send it to you uh, i will now run through the alternative skimmers i use an abenaki into coolant coalescer and I'm basically modifying their intake for that but I'll show you the other options so if I go to Abenaki first here we go so I went with the Abenaki because it retails for about this same price in GBP British pounds here in the UK where I'm based uh, about so about 600 pounds uh, there is as you can see it kind of uses a lot of people will be familiar with this it's got a magnet that can put it to the side of the machine doesn't work on my UMC 500 because there's no flat surface uh, within a reasonable distance of the coolant tank to actually put that. So I just have mine standing on top of the coolant tank. Uh, you can't get a little pump and then you get this plastic in intake. So let's have a look at this picture down here. So yeah, you can see they've got it fixed on the side of the machine. I can't do that with my um, with my Hash UMC 500. So yeah, the pumps the coolant up. So the pump is in the tank, actually sits in the tank like you'd have a pump in a fish tank. Sucks the coolant up, it goes into here, it settles, and that means your oil sits in here and you drain it off occasionally rather than being in your actual coolant tank. So on the same principle, I'm sure many in America will have heard of the see-through separator. Same principle, but using slightly better components. In the UK, this retails for about uh, £1,600. And what they're doing is adding an aftermarket pump, so a much more powerful pump, and putting a pre-filter on it, which I think is about a 20 micron filter. Uh, they do also do a diaphragm pump option. I'm not entirely sure what the benefits to that are, but I think it's just in case your filter gets clogged or so on. People like the idea of having something that runs on air, which is what a diaphragm pump does. So if you do get a clog, all you've got is just... Uh, air basically um, whereas if you have a motor that is running dry you might have issues with it overheating and so on which can be dangerous I think that's the principle behind why some people like using this air pump this diaphragm pump but diaphragm pumps are more expensive so yeah this one retails the one with the electric motor retails for about 1600 pounds the diaphragm pump will be more I don't I can't remember how much but same principle the, this model, this see-through model, uses these metal uh, in balls on the side of a triangular, whereas the Abenaki uses the plastic version there. The see-through uses these metal, this metal version. So it's slightly higher quality, but you get the same problem. You don't get much of a vortex. Finally, you've got the Keller, which I, I haven't heard much about. I just randomly read about it on a forum. You don't hear it mentioned much. But it's the same principle again. Um, you've got a pump in the tank. It pumps coolant up through this filter, which then goes down. And it, the way they do it, have it is it goes. This uses a diaphragm pump as well. It goes down into this tank, and it has a load of washers on the pipe. And apparently, the way that the process of blasting the coolant through those washers separates out the oil. That's the principle. And they're just little plastic washers that you can replace pounds for pennies every couple of years and then yeah that separates out the oil as you can see the oil sits in this tank and then the clean coolant goes back from a pipe with the inlet for the pipe is right at the bottom here it goes up and then down back into the tank so fairly simple system but again this retails for about 1600 pounds so I went with the Abenaki because it was after a bit of research it just seemed to be the one I can afford um, and you probably don't get as good a pump as you do on the other versions 
but it's working okay for me. Uh, the only problem is this intake, and it seems to be a problem you'll have with both the see-through and the Keller, because the Keller uses, like the see-through, uses this kind of in, inlet um, with the steel balls. It's worth noting that I've designed my intake around the Abenaki pump, so that little pom pump there. I don't know how strong the pump is for the see-through, the standard pump is for the see-through and the Keller. It may be that they provide more suction, they probably do, and therefore that might cause this to behave in a different way, my intake. It's just something to note, but again, you've got the design file, so probably if it's sucking more through, the way to deal with that is just make increase the size of this, increase the diameter a little bit is what I would do. Um, and then it should work. I don't see any reason it didn't, because I, I, my initial design for this was smaller, and all I did was increase the size until it started taking in the right amount. And that seemed to work. So that's how I would change it. If you do have these other pumps and they, yeah, they're providing more suction, therefore want to suck in more coolant. That's the only change I could think of that you'd need. Uh, the other change is maybe if your tank is really shallow, you might want to reduce the size of this, uh, the length of this. I find. I don't have mine turned on during the day because the coolant level does in the Haas tank the pumps are in a separate section of the tank and I find the level when the pump comes both the through spindle pump and the normal coolant pump come on the level drops quite rapidly and then it kind of catches up and tops up but when it drops rapidly the coolant this goes all the way to the bottom and the coolant drops below this level here which means the pump starts cavitating because it's not getting any coolant in it. And once it's cavitating, you have to go and turn it off and on again to get the air out, which isn't ideal and it isn't going to be something you bother doing during the day whilst you're running parts. So I just turn it on at night and turn it off in the morning, and that's fine. It kind of catches up overnight. That's just me, but everyone's different, so you can alter it accordingly.